What's up YouTube, it's Joel. We've got your update for the fourth stimulus check as well as these huge trillion dollar bills. And wow, right now the GOP is saying that the bipartisan bill has no chance of passing, which means that the reconciliation bill will get larger. And yes, including those four stimulus checks. Biden is trying to work to save the bipartisan bill, but it's not looking too good. But we've got Bernie Sanders, who is the real force behind these huge trillion dollar bill, this reconciliation bill, and now he's about to make it larger with reform for Medicare and Social Security changes to help our seniors with getting bigger changes in their benefits as well as large monthly checks. And we've also got Pelosi, who is ready to tweak the reconciliation bill and add more to it as well, making it an even larger than $3.5 trillion bill. And if you got student loans, we've got good news for you on that student loan pause and also with student loan cancellation cancellations. But this is your stimulus and economic news update and I hope you're having a wonderful day. So I just want to say thank you for everybody supporting the channel. But hey, we're trying to get to 55,000 subscribers. And when we do, I'm going to give away another $500 on this channel to our subscribers. And in order to qualify, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment down below on one of the topics that we talk about. But we're so excited for where the channel is going and everybody that's a part of this journey with us. But please, if anyone asks you for personal info or to contact them on WhatsApp or to text them, it is fake, please don't do it. So right now, Chuck Schumer has got it set to vote on these huge trillion dollar stimulus bills, including the bipartisan bill. And the Republicans have called on Chuck Schumer to slow down the process of moving these bipartisan infrastructure bill through the Senate chambers. But Schumer said it is not a cynical ploy. It is not a fish or cut bait moment. It is not an attempt to jam anyone. It's only a signal that the Senate is ready to get the process started. Something the Senate has routinely done on the other bipartisan bills this year. Schumer said on the Senate floor, the motion to proceed on Wednesday is simply about getting the legislative process started here on the Senate floor. It is not a deadline to determine every final detail of the bill. So with that, they are ready to push forward this huge trillion dollar bills. This is going to bring a lot of change that the Democrats have been wanting to make for a long, long time. Pelosi is telling her members to hold tight right now, saying to trust in the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, as well as her confidence that she can calm her anxious caucus. In a leadership meeting, she told lawmakers that they would let the Senate process play out, according to multiple Democrats. Pelosi said the timing is what is his timing is, referring to Schumer. As I say, bring the bill to the floor when you're ready to go, so I respect his timing. Progressives have said that they are intent on holding Pelosi to her previous comment that the Senate bipartisan deal won't get a vote until that chamber has also advanced the Democrats' sweeping social spending plan. They're referring to the reconciliation bill. We even had a representative, Jamal Bowman, who said, I'm hoping that she keeps her vow. I think she will. She's been steadfast from the very beginning. If she said it, she means it. So with this, Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are both planning for some huge, big, bold spending. They're wanting to update Social Security big time, and they're wanting to expand Medicare. Now, getting the bipartisan bill passed is not looking too good. This is the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that where you had half Democrats and half Republicans come together to create. So Republican leaders said that they wanted to see the legislative text before voting on such a deal. Now, Senator Mitch McConnell, who's the minority Senate leader, said we need to see the bill before voting to go to it. I think that's pretty easily understood. I think we need to see the bill before we decide whether or not to vote for it. This is where Biden has continued to push for legislative action, saying his economic policies along with the vaccination efforts as a critical driver of accelerating growth. He promised that his remaining agenda items would help Americans work more and earn more money while restraining price increases and pushing back on a critique from Republicans. But with this, he's actually been working with some of the Republicans to get this bipartisan bill passed, but they're not having it because they don't have the full text of the bill. 
So understandably, they don't want to vote for something that they haven't seen the full text of. Because Chuck Schumer is trying to get this passed very quickly, that's where they're just trying to get it to the floor to vote to say, hey, we're going to bring this bill in, this reconciliation bill, and we're going to start the process. So now remember, they do have the votes to get the reconciliation bill done, but not the bipartisan by themselves without GOP support. So then we got Bernie Sanders, who has been exercising a strong influence over the, over the White House and Washington. And this is the biggest influence he's ever had. He's literally been working closely with Biden and the White House. And Biden's actually supported a lot of Sanders' ideas. And there's a lot of Sanders' ideas that are in this huge $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. Now, both of them have been having extended meetings. They've been discussing that uh, this bill needs to go bigger in terms of what it's doing. So Biden's original infrastructure proposal was $4 trillion, but Bernie Sanders says it needs to be around the $6 trillion mark, which the president was actually open to. And the two of them have been talking about uniting the party in support for the reconciliation bill. So with that, the bipartisan bill Really, really not looking to getting passed, according to the Republicans. But this is where I said we can see a larger reconciliation bill because there's $1.2 trillion worth of stuff that's in the bipartisan bill that's not in the reconciliation bill. And they said that the only reason they had it at $3.5 trillion is because there was stuff in the, re in the bipartisan bill that wasn't in the reconciliation bill. So this is where we can see that price increase. But they are still wanting to add a lot of stuff to it especially when it gets to the House of Representatives with Nancy Pelosi. But one of the things that they want to add, and they're very intent on, and this is coming from Bernie Sanders, is getting more direct stimulus payments to Americans in the form of stimulus checks. He already said that he's in favor of it, and he would like to see a $2,000 stimulus check for adults and a $1,000 stimulus check for children. And if you're on SSI, SSDI, or Social Security, you would be included in getting one of these stimulus checks. With the reconciliation bill, they can pass it without the Republicans and get everything they want on their plate. A big one is that Nancy Pelosi says that she wants to make the new stimulus checks for the child tax credit permanent. Well, you've got Chuck Schumer and Biden who want to bring some huge increases to Social Security. They want to give a $200 increase to all Social Security beneficiaries. They want to bring reform to a lot of the laws that define that program. They want to raise everyone to at least 125% of the federal poverty line, which brings everybody to receiving a $1,341 check each month at minimum for all Social Security recipients. They also have added that they want to go with adding dental, vision, and hearing care to the Medicare program. So these are big, huge moves that they're planning for this reconciliation bill that's already in there. Now with this, there's opposition, but the ball is in the Democrats' court. They have the majority, they have the votes, and they can make it happen. Now my question is, what do you think? Dude, what do you think about this huge? We're talking about spending trillions and trillions of dollars, and everybody right now is talking about inflation going up, and everybody's concerned about that. So I wanna know what you think about that in the comment section, and then we can talk about it from there. But if you're looking for more relief from these student loans, then you'll be glad to know that it's already in the works to extend the pause for the student loan repayments. And Biden is actively working to cancel some student loan debt. We already have Senator Elizabeth Warren and some members of the US Department of Education who are all pushing Biden to extend the student loan relief beyond September 30th, 2021. Because currently right now, the following student loan relief is about to expire in just a couple of months at the end of September. Now they're also pushing for no federal student loan payments, 0% interest on federal student loans, and no collection of student loan debt in default, including garnishment of wages. They're saying that it needs to be paused till at least March 31st of 2022. But there are others who are saying it needs to be postponed until the end of the COVID-19 pandemic without specifying a specific date as to what actually determines the end. But the reason being is that they say that we're still in recovery mode and that the systems wouldn't be able to handle the influx of people going back on the system or calling to get more relief or to get forbearment from paying their student loans. Now with that, everyone is leaning towards it being extended 
and also on Biden to cancel up to $10,000 in student loans for every borrower while the student loans are paused. If he does that, you're talking about millions of people who wouldn't even have to start making any payments anymore because it would literally wipe out all the student loans that they have. So with that, you've got Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer who are both banking on Biden doing both those things. And this is good news if you're still needing some extra time to get those things taken care of because the average student loan we know is $394 a month. So not a small amount whatsoever, but it is pretty significant when you talk about the average American household income. But with this, you've got a lot of these top Democrats that are pushing on Biden and he's listening to them and he's actually doing a lot of things that they're asking for him to do on getting these student loans paused for some more time. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on what needs to happen. What do you think Biden needs to do? Does he need to even cancel student loans? Or how long do we need to keep on pause for so people don't have to pay them back just yet? But when it comes to investing, to growing your wealth, to start winning with your finances, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take consistency, and it's gonna take moving forward at a, at a pace where you can afford it. Not a lot of people have thousands of dollars to put into their investing accounts or to even start investing. But hey, if you got $5, if you got $10, $20, you can do that and put that in every single week and you can start growing your wealth and have your money start working for you. And why not start off with two free stocks with Webull worth up to $1,850 and also sign up with Robinhood. Get two free stocks with them worth up to $500. This is free money. It gets you started on building your wealth. Those links are down in the description for you to click on and go straight to those websites to set up an account and actually start investing. Now, I personally invest in the S&P 500. I've made quite a bit of money there and I actually had somebody who commented and say, hey, put more of this information into the description, which I'll do. If you wanna search for it, I'll put a link in there to get some more info on the S&P 500 but it's amazing. There's 500 companies that comprises this index, so it's very safe in terms of how much money you put in there because it's not just one company, it's 500. And it's done really well over the past decade and so on. And there's been a lot of people that have made a lot of money on this. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so everything you do is at your own risk, but I want to say that I personally invest all my money into the S&P 500, but do your research and you won't be disappointed when it comes to this index. But if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section and I'll answer them from there. But don't forget to subscribe, like this video and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all stimulus and economic news that affects you and learn how to build some wealth. This is Joel with True Life Investing. Until next time, peace out.